we know that allergies are not a disease by itself they are caused by various allergens today we are going to discuss about the food allergy environmental allergy i am dr nagarajan from chennai chief veterinary physician in balo pet clinic and i am the president for indian association for veterinary dermatology i do lot of uh, dermatological practice we are going to talk about the food allergy so the how to identify what is the uh, food allergy food allergy is nothing but cutaneous adverse food reaction we call it as cutaneous adverse food reaction so this is a, a non seasonal disease and it can be at any age even after a one month uh, dog or one month uh, cat can develop allergy when the food is not suiting for the body so we have to ask thorough history so the one of themselves will be telling uh, my dog is allergic to chicken my dog is alle- allergic to egg like that or any dairy product immediately they develop reactions so it is very important to identify it is a non seasonal disease and it is a highly pruritic disease so it may or may not have the skin lesion in case of uh, food allergy but it will have definitely it will have itching then apart from that it may also have other system involvement like urinary tract involvement or it may be having a respiratory involvement particularly it may have a gastrointestinal involvement a very rarely neurological involvement in gastrointestinal involvement will be having a symptoms in a different way it may go for occasional vomiting occasional loose motion and it may go for borborrhic mus or it may have uh, some flatulence or it will go for uh, erectation all these things will be happening in the animal uh, with the gi signs so the gastrointestinal signs identification is so important in this this particular sign will not be there in atopy if the food is going to be allergic we have to check whether it is uh, related to uh, that particular protein and vasoactive amines coloring agents all these things can create allergy in a dog so we have to identify whether it is having a really a food allergy which is immunological or non immunological non immunological food allergy means they may go for food aversion some people may not like curd so they will have aversion towards the particular food so that is the uh, non immunological and sometime food indiscretion and food intolerance food intolerance means like lactose intolerance when the animal is going to have some lactose in the milk is going to be uh, intolerance it it may go for loose motion so likewise we have got a non immunological reasons apart from that immunological reasons there will be the body will identify the protein as a foreign invader so what will happen immediately they will stimulate the immune system so they will react so it can be of two type one is uh, immediate reaction another one is delayed reaction immediate reaction we call it as type 1 and delayed reaction may be type 3 and type 4 so that particular food is exposed already but it may not develop initially uh, the reaction later if it is going to get re exposed then it will have reaction so likewise so here we have to control this uh, dietary uh, allergy by way of uh, dietary trial not by any means dietary trial means we have to go for avoiding the allergens particularly the food allergy in case of small animal particularly in dog you will be having dairy product wheat product nuts product and chicken mutton beef all these six items are very important allergens in dogs so we have to avoid that and see whether it has got a allergy or not by uh, giving food which are avoiding these proteins and going for a different protein that is a uh we can go for a fish protein or we can go for a pork or we can give duck like that and uh, which should be a novel protein novel protein means which is not exposed before so in the fish we have to avoid salmon and cod because recently in the research they have identified that the cod and salmon are having a genetically equivalent to the chicken so we have to avoid uh, these two salmon and cod uh, uh, fish in dietary trial so it is very very important to go for a dietary trial for 5 weeks to 8 weeks and see whether all the clinical signs are subsiding and if it is going to get subsided we have to reintroduce that is the challenge 
and if you are going to challenge it and provocate it it will have it again that confirms the disease so the food allergy we have to identify whether it is related to uh, which protein and we have to avoid that so that we will give a better life to the animal and apart from that we have got a very variation in the protein actually we have a, a protein molecular weight is playing an important role if it is going to be less than one uh, then it will be no allergy whereas if it is going to have one two three it will have a very low allergy so that delton molecular weight delton will be very low low means it will have less allergy so it is very important to check majority of the food will be with the 14 to 40 uh, delton uh, kilo delton as a protein molecular weight that will create allergy so that's why we have come across lot of uh, large number of uh, hypoallergenic diets with a low molecular weight uh, that is the one which will help for uh, controlling the food allergy next we are going to talk about environmental allergy Environmental allergy in dogs are called as canine atopic dermatitis. So the canine atopic dermatitis is a hereditary disease. It will have a severe itching and uh, T cells are very important to provoke this particular uh, disease. T lymphocytes are going to be more in the population and when they are getting uh, driven into the system, uh, they will create large number of uh, cytokines in the system. So they contact the nerve endings to create itching. So the itching sensation will occur. So the self-mutilation is very important uh, in this disease. We cannot cure the disease, but uh, we can uh, control the disease. We can manage the disease. It is like a human asthma. So uh, we can maintain the disease. It is like a life lifestyle disease. So we have to understand that and we can easily manage this disease. Uh, and we have to give the quality of life to the dog. So we cannot uh, completely cure the disease because it is a genetical disease. Apart from that, it has got a, a very important area where uh, we all forget. The microbial dysbiosis is one of the important thing, both in gut as well as in the skin, which is occurring in this disease. That's why in recent research, they have identified that if the probiotic is going to be added from the puppyhood, then there is less chance for getting this disease. So even though it is genetically uh, prone for this disease, uh, if it is going to get exposed to the probiotic in the food, like uh, in Godrej Ninja, we have got uh, probiotics. So this probiotic food, if it is going to be given from the childhood, then there is less chance to have the anionotopic dermatitis. Apart from that, uh, the skin barrier dysfunction is one of the important thing we can have in this disease. So this skin barrier dysfunction, to correct that, we have to have the water loss, that is uh, transepidermal water loss that is happening in this disease. That's why dehydration occurs. Then apart from that, we have got a filagrin. There is a protein called filagrin in the epidermis and the skin. So that filagrin mutation occurs. Then apart from that lipid, which is going to be there in the epidermis that is making a very great uh, uh, protection for the skin. So the adding of uh, lipids like essential fatty acids are very very important to go for adding the essential fatty acids, adding the uh, proper uh, collagens in the diet or even as a medication we can give and correct the problem. So that is very important. Uh, the main thing is we have to control the cytokines. We have got drugs like cyclosporine, we have got drugs like aclocitinib. All these things will help in controlling even the monoclonal antibodies we have got uh, that will act on the interleukin 31 that will help in controlling the disease. Because they, the IL-31 is very important to create itching in the nerve ending. So that is the one being controlled by this monoclonal antibody. So that is being marketed now. Uh, recent research finding they have identified that and that is very, very useful in managing the disease. Apart from that, immunotherapy also one another important area where we have to improve ourselves to create that immunotherapy in India. So we have to go for identifying the pollens which are prevalent in the particular area and take the 
anti allergen and inject into the animal in a periodical way so that they develop antibody in the system so that will solve the problem so far we have seen how to manage and how to treat and how to recognize all the canine allergic dermatitis in our small animal practice which consists of uh, food allergy that is cutaneous adverse food reaction we have seen about the environmental allergy that is uh, canine atopic dermatitis all these things are uh, very important uh, dermatitis in our practice so it is very important to recognize and correct it so that we can have a, a better uh, relationship with the client and uh, we can have a better improvement for the dogs and cats